everybody. Welcome to the Underwater Photography Show. As always, I am Matthew Sullivan. And I'm Alex Mustard. Uh, and today we are going to, the topic we're covering today is why go mirrorless? Um, so it's a big debate still for people who are holdouts in the DSLR world. Uh, so maybe today this video can help you can help convince you uh, to make the switch. And we'll try and make it a fairly snappy conversation because it's a big topic and we could easily talk for an hour on this. So <laughs> we'll try and keep this to a normal kind of episode length. Um, I'd also just say we're not, this is very much aimed at kind of a current SLR user who's seeing a lot of their buddies go to mirrorless and wondering if they should be making the jump too. And this is probably going to be one of two videos. We'll, I guess we'll do one which is promoting mirrorless, why you should switch. And then probably in a few days time, we'll do one, which is why you just stick with where you are. So you might want to watch both before you make a decision. This is the, the pro mirrorless video, but it's not really aimed, you know, if you, you're a, um, a micro four thirds shooter who's been shooting mirrorless for a decade, you know, it's not really aimed at you, this video. This is about the people who are still on SLRs trying to understand what mirrorless brings. And I guess the first part of all of that is if you are an SLR user and you want a new camera, New cameras for all of us these days are going to be mirrorless cameras. Um, there may be one or two SLRs that may come out, but I would be shocked, to be honest, if there any of them are anything more than sort of retro selling um, beasts. All the new technology, all the new capability, all the new performance is going to be wrapped up in mirrorless bodies. And so if you're looking to change to a new camera, that's going to be a mirrorless camera. So um, that's kind of the first reason this is the future. The future's here now. If you're going for a new camera, go mirrorless. Right, Matt, your turn. Yeah, so uh, perhaps the biggest reason to go mirrorless uh, over SLR at this point, and this is not to, to dump on SLRs, um, but it's the autofocus. So being able to use the actual sensor for all the autofocusing on mirrorless means you have full autofocus coverage across the frame, um, which open, which makes often tracking easier. It allows you to have focus points. A lot of the cameras now, it's like 98% coverage for the focus points. So you can have a subject all the way in the very tippy top corner uh, and still get a focus point on that, which opens up new composition opportunities and things like that. Um, and generally, at least the newer generations of mirrorless cameras are significantly faster overall. Um, so compared, I mean, you know, there's still like the one DX Mark three and Nikon D five and D six, which are beasts and will be good enough autofocus for just about everything. Um, that said cameras that are newer, a one, a nine, three, a seven, R five, all those kind of things. Um, they are better. It's just objectively better, uh, better tracking. They're stickier. Uh, and like we, like I just briefly mentioned, um, having autofocus points all over the frame, um, especially if you're a fast action shooter, uh, is indispensable probably um, for keeping your subject in focus no matter where it is. Um, yeah. And then being able to track it all the way. All and well. all I would add to that really is that it is a slightly different autofocus experience. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think, you know, one thing, you know, I noticed teaching workshops is people often come on the workshops and go, oh, I got this camera because I heard the autofocus was fantastic, usually blaming me for telling them that. <laughs> and then they'll come back for the first time and go, oh, you know what? I didn't really find the autofocus that fantastic. And then after a couple of days, they're like, wow, this thing is amazing. And yeah. I think it does, if you've come from an SLR, it does take a couple of dives to get into it. Anyway, my next one is would, the whole, I, oh, sorry, I, sorry. I my would, I would say, uh, that probably the reason for that is the mirrorless cameras have so many different autofocus options in terms of configuration uh, that it can take a little bit to set it up and figure out what one works best. Whereas DSLR was like, you turn it on, you pick your mode and you're kind of there. Yeah. Um, so if you are frustrated when you first get mirrorless cameras that it's not autofocusing the way a DSLR does, that's kind of just how it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you take the time to dig through the menus and figure it all out, you can configure it to work more DSLR like, and you'll get used to the the autofocus and generally it's going to be better. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, I'm going to go something that's very much part of the mirrorless experience and say the whole EVF viewing. And this, I think, is quite a controversial one and, and we'll probably put the EVF in the why stick with an SLR um, talk as well, chat as well. But I think once you adapt to shooting with an EVF, particularly as an underwater photographer, it brings some massive um, advantages. The first of those is that they're big, bright, you know, it, it, it go into a dark place, it brightens everything up. You can see really well, big, bright view. 
Also, because you know, if you're using EVF with an external viewfinder with a, a diopter adjustment, if you have any sort of sight issues, you can have a fantastic view through the camera. But I think what people love about EVF shooting as underwater photographers is they can set their camera to show all their review pictures in the EVF. So you can be eye to that great big viewfinder with a lovely external viewfinder and not just see the scenes you're shooting, but see your images to review. And when you're shooting with flash, the one thing you can't see at the time of shooting is what your flash is doing. So being able to just, you know, see that through the viewfinder as you're shooting, you know, it's, it's easy to quickly zoom into 100% to check focus if that's what you want to do. But particularly that immediate ability to review without moving your head. You know, one of the big problems people have in underwater photography is they shoot a great picture. They want to check it on their SLR and they yeah. thrust their camera away from them to see the screen and they thrust it straight into the subject matter or that movement scares the subject away. And with a, uh, you know, when you're shooting with an EVF, shoot, review, okay, that's great. That's working, click, click, or, oh, I need to make a change, but you don't need to move yourself away from the viewfinder to do that. Also, you can access all the menus through that same EVF. So you want to change something on the camera. Again, you're not having to make all that sort of movement to do it. It's just all there. You're on the viewfinder, shoot, shoot, shoot. You definitely stress the subject less. You definitely stir up less, um, you know, particles and things if you're in a silty environment. And I love that side of it. Another part of the EVF experience is the fact that if you're shooting available light, you can set the EVF to show you your pictures as your exposure settings are recording them. They often call this what you see is what you get um, shooting. And if you know your settings are good, it means that particularly when you're doing available light shooting, which is typically when you tend to use that settings effect um, on the camera to show you, that you through the viewfinder what the final shot's like, you really don't need to review anymore. You shoot and you just, you know, you turn the reviewing off because you know exactly what your pictures are going to look like when you're shooting them. So why bother reviewing them? And I really like that for, for the available light shooting. So the whole EVF experience for me is really, I think the thing I probably like the most about mirrorless is once you've adapted to it, it's fantastic. Anyway, your go. <laughs> yeah, so uh, another kind of playing into that, um, another advantage of the mirrorless is you can use the LCD to, the same way you can use the EVF, you can use the LCD. So if you ever tried to autofocus using the LCD screen with the DSLR, it is almost impossible and underwater it's, it's not going to happen. Mm. Uh, it, they're just not designed that way. Um, with the mirrorless cameras, you can use the LCD the same way you use the regular viewfinder. So you can you have all of the same options. So if you don't have an external viewfinder, um, you can still use the LCD. The disadvantage is if you're shooting things that are on the bottom or something like that, you have to still kind of crank your neck into an awkward position. Um, but it's still better than trying to shoot uh, mm. through that tiny, tiny little uh, viewfinder that comes standard with housings. Um, and then this is something I do is I use a monitor a lot. So I don't have a viewfinder on my housing. Um, but the advantage of mirrorless is you can use the use an external monitor and you don't have lag like you would with a DSLR. So uh, it's essentially just, just showing you it's like a little mini TV screen that essentially just shows you your LCD screen. Um, and then what I really like about it is especially for shoot because I dive a lot here locally, it's silty mucky conditions is I can have the camera flat on the bottom and I can just tilt the monitor up look right at me you can change all your settings the same way again without having to look at the screen or take your eye move the camera all around um, so it's for me it's much more comfortable to dive that way and you couldn't do that with an SLR whereas you can with a mirrorless uh, so for me that's a huge advantage and yeah, really good point. For, there's a lot of uh, maybe not a lot but there are certain housings that don't have the options for external viewfinders almost all of them you can somehow connect a monitor um, which is, and the monitors aren't cheap either, of course, but um, for certain types of shooting, they're indispensable. How does the price of a monitor and a housing for it compare to one of the expensive external viewfinders? So the I have the Kraken monitor. It's all its own unit, so it's you don't have to buy the monitor and the housing separately. Okay. Um, there's the two versions from Kraken are one of them's cheaper than most. Like for example, the Nauticam viewfinders, it's cheaper than that. Um, the bigger version is around the same price as the viewfinder. Okay, so yeah, just in, that, in that aspect, it kind of comes down to how you prefer to shoot. Um, mm. and, but I do think there are instances where monitors can give you an advantage over, over the external viewfinders, as well as the, the viewfinders having advantage over monitors. So, uh, mm. it's kind of personal preference, unless you can get both, then by all means get both and use them interchangeably. Um, 
But again, it's nice to have options, whereas with DSLR, monitor was never really an option. Yeah. I've never tried um, shooting stills on a monitor. I must try it at some point. Um, right, the one I'm going to bring up as a point is probably the one that a lot of the, certainly my friends who are land wildlife photographers, talk about the most. And that's the incredible frame rates that mirrorless cameras are able to do. Not having a mechanical shutter in there, um, they can burn some incredible frame rates. There's lots of cameras that can do 20, 30 frames a second. I know the new Sony can do 120 frames a second of RAW, which is just ridiculous. Um, but those things are being made possible by this technology. And for people who are shooting fast action, particularly, you know, land nature pictures or sports photography, those high frame rates can be incredibly valuable. I think underwater they have less of a value, and that's because the majority of underwater shots are taken with flash. And although our flashes, there are some flashes now that can do super high shooting, you're still talking five to 10 frames a second, which is actually what SLRs could give you. So, you know, yeah. don't think that the mirrorless camera is the essential part of, of that. And I think also what I feel is that the majority of underwater subjects don't benefit from this spray and pray approach. Because the reason that a lot of land photographers, say a land nature photographer likes those high frame rates is maybe they're a bird photographer. They want to do birds in flight. When birds fly, their wings are moving incredibly fast, changing shape. And the reason they're shooting that high frame rate is to catch that perfect wing shape. You know, fish don't swim like that. And also, you know, you know birds and other animals, they blink. Fish don't blink. And you know, so a lot of our subjects, they don't change their shape so quickly. You know, water's more viscous. So you don't have animals that are kind of doing this all the time. Things go much more slowly and smoothly underwater. And so the high frame rates, I don't think, are as critical underwater. Um, they're also obviously limited by flash recycle. Now, I think one term they are useful underwater is with fast action available light subjects, you know, shooting dolphins, shooting bait balls, that sort of thing. The high frame rates of mirrorless probably have some advantages where you can, you know, really, you know, you know, to think of an example from, you know, the recent UPYs, you know, a big whale is coming in to muller a bait ball. You, that's kind of the time you probably want to keep the finger down and, and blast <laughs> off a load of shots and have a choice yeah. of, of frame rates afterwards. And so, yeah, in situations like that, yes, I think that's one of the few times you might use those very high frame rates of mirrorless. But if you're a purely underwater photographer, it is a plus point, but it's nowhere near as big a plus point as many people would make you believe. And most of the SLRs were pretty capable in that regard as well. Yeah. Um, I, it would, I would also sort of add to that, don't let a mirrorless camera that doesn't have a really crazy high frame rate put you off buying it. A, a camera like the A7R5 is not a, you know, 20 frames a second camera, but it's still a very capable underwater camera because you need that, that specification so rarely. That's a good point is to look for, look for specs that will matter to you when shooting underwater, not necessarily whatever camera has the best specs. Like the A93, the new one is a beast, but a lot of those specs are not going to translate to underwater usage. So it isn't necessarily the right camera to get, despite it being one of Sony's arguably best. Um, though I suppose somebody's going to get it underwater at some point and we'll, we'll hear about it and yeah. maybe I'll be proven wrong. But uh, yeah, we'll but I, I'm going to, you know, sort of contradict again on that and say that I think one of the other arguments for some of the mirrorless cameras are their very specific specs. Yeah. that do enhance our capability underwater. Yeah. And that camera you just mentioned, the Sony A9 Mark III, um, that camera has a global shutter, which allows means that you can use flash with it at any synchronization speed. And that is clearly an exciting piece of technology for, for serious underwater photographers to get their hands on. Um, the camera that I choose to use underwater at the moment, which is the Sony A1, one of the main reasons I chose that camera is it has a native flash sync of a one four hundredth of a second. And I don't use it all the time, but you know what? I was just in Raja Ampat, you know, shooting shallow reefs, bright tropical sunlight, being able to just knock that shutter speed up a little bit, really helpful a lot of the time. So no, specific, and because all the new tech is coming out on mirror, those aren't mirrorless specific features, really. They're more features that are just coming out with the newer cameras and therefore, you know, they just happen to mirrorless. Um, so another thing to touch on that we want to discuss is image quality. Mm. Um, so it seems that these days image quality, at least in my opinion, has kind of plateaued. Um, there 
raising resolution all the time. Um, but you know, there's only so much image quality you can get out of the same size sensor, no matter how many pixels you put on it. Um, so unless you're going up to medium format where you can get a significantly bigger sensor, uh, in my opinion, it has kind of leveled out. So I don't necessarily know that image quality is itself is a reason to move to mirrorless because cameras like the Nikon D850 and things like that had in incredible image quality, but it depends where you're coming from. What's the, yes, that's true. Um, and also mirrorless, the new mirrorless optics um, are lauded for giving ridiculous clarity and sharpness and, and resolution. So perhaps a high resolution, a new high resolution mirrorless camera with those best optics can in theory give you a bit better image quality. Um, you know, two examples that come to mind are the Canon RF 100 macro and the new Nikon 105 macro. Um, I've used the Canon one. It is a ridiculous lens. Um, and I used the old version too, and that was a great lens. The RF lens is better. So I think for situations like that, um, you can eke out better image quality, uh, but also important to remember that water is a fantastic equalizer. So the optics or any water contact optics or lenses, things like that are going to matter probably more than the camera will. Um, Cause shooting through water is not the same as shooting through air. And there's a lot of stuff that gets in between the lens and uh, the subject in water. So. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's why in underwater photography, it tends to be the best photographers who are most skilled at getting their camera close to subjects tend to have yeah. not just the most dramatic images, but also actually the best image quality as well, because yeah. they're shooting it right. They're shooting it through the smallest amount of water and the, and the final result is so good. Yeah. Um, the, the final one um, that I was sort of, you know, wanting to mention, um, which I think I kind of touched on a little bit when I was talking about the EVF is, is that eyesight thing is that, I think, you know, quite a lot of underwater photographers, you know, one of the challenges is seeing their pictures while underwater. And I do think that particularly if you, you know, you do struggle a bit to see the LCD screen on the back of your camera. I love being able to review pictures through the EVF, particularly through a big viewfinder. You can adjust them. So obviously they're completely sharp with the adjustable doctor in the viewfinder, but also it's completely shaded. So you can see it really well. If you do a lot of photography in bright, shallow conditions, being able to see the pictures really clearly and know you've absolutely nailed the, the exposure, nailed the lighting, nailed the focus is a really valuable thing. And yes. so, you know, um, I think I spent a lot of time in my early days of the mirrorless transition talking about how the EVF was a step backwards over an optical viewfinder. And in a couple of areas, we'll touch on in the other episode, it is. But I now feel that the advantages of that aspect of, of mirrorless significantly outweigh the disadvantages. And that's for me is, is a major reason, you know, not only getting my hands on the new tech, but using that. I think that's pretty much everything on my list. Um, I know there's something written down here that says better video, but I'm not sure what video <laughs> is. So I don't think we need to talk about that. Yeah, we're not we're not video guys. I'll shoot a clip here and there. But but yeah, just to touch on it, uh, the new mirrorless cameras can obviously do significantly better video than um, DSLRs could. I mean, maybe the 1DX Mark III from Canon was a good video video SLR. Um, but obviously, like you said, with all the new features, all the video specs are going into newer cameras, all of which tend to be mirrorless. Um, so if you're going to do, if you're planning on doing video and you're, you're looking at a new camera, mirrorless is going to be the way to go, um, especially if you're still using a, a hybrid camera where you shoot stills and video. Um, mirrorless is where it's at. Well, that seems like a great place to wrap up. Don't forget, there is a second part to this video, which is why you should stay with your SLR. Um, I'm not sure it's going to be quite as long, but there are some valid arguments in it. So thanks for watching the Underwater Photography Show. We'll be back again soon. Bye.